Hello everyone. In this problem, we are given a sorted list of integers, nums, and two other integers, k and x. Our goal is to return a list of the k closest integers to x in the array. If there is a tie, we choose the lower number. We are guaranteed that the nums array has at least one element, and that k will be between 1 and the length of the nums array. We are not guaranteed that x will be an element present in num. So for this example, k is 3, so we want to return the three closest numbers to x. Those would be the two fives, because those are 1 away from 4. 2 and 6 are tied for 2 away from 4. However, since 2 is less, we choose the lower one of the two. Okay, now that you hopefully understand the problem, let's come up with a solution. The first solution is brute force. We are going to start at the opposing ends of the array with two pointers, left and right. These two pointers represent a window of the possible candidate values we will return as our answer. While this window is still larger than the k elements we return, we need to narrow down the candidates. We do this by comparing the distance to x between the left and right pointers. If the left value is farther away, then we eliminate it from our window by moving the left boundary to the right by 1. On the flip side, if the right boundary is worse, then we eliminate it by moving the right boundary to the left by 1. When our window is of size k, we know we have found the best k candidates, and we return the window. Let's analyze the time and space complexity of this solution. If we let n be the length of nums, the initial while loop is going to iterate n minus k times because it eliminates one element from the left-right candidate window per iteration. And it does this until the window is of size k. We also have plus k for the time it takes to implicitly copy the slice of low to high when returning it as our answer. This reduces to O of n. For space, we aren't using any extra space except for returning our answer, which doesn't count, so that is constant. In terms of asymptotic complexity, the brute force solution 1 is actually the best we can do. However, it is worth exploring a second solution, which can help improve the practical time complexity in certain situations. The idea is to binary search for x in the nums array, even if we don't find it, we will find the largest number that is less than x and the smallest number that is larger than x. Once we have those two numbers, we can expand outward to pick the k closest candidates to x. So let's look at a couple examples. The first part of our algorithm will binary search. There are two main cases. On the left, we have a case where x is not present in the nums array. In this case, when the binary search finishes, the two pointers we use for binary search will be around the highest number still lower than x, so 2, and the other pointer will be around the lowest number still higher than x, which is 5. In the second example, x is present in the nums array, and for this case, when the binary search finishes, one pointer will be on the leftmost occurrence of x, and the other pointer will be the highest number still lower than x. Here's the code for the first part of the solution. It is just binary search, which I will assume you already know, so I won't step through. But if you are confused, please pause the video and verify for yourself that what I said is correct. The second part of the code is kind of the flip side of what we do in the first situation. In the first solution, we start from the outside boundaries and eliminate candidates, shrinking the window. In the second solution, we are going to start with the inside boundaries and expand the window until our window is of size k. Let's look at the second example in more detail. So the binary search would leave the two pointers here. We would then compare their distance to x. So is the 2 or 5 closer to 5? Obviously the 5 is closer. So we would include that in our final answer and move the pointer to the right. Next, we once again compare the 2 to 5, and the second 5 is closer. So that gets added, and we move the right pointer to the right. Next, we compare the 2 to the 6. The 6 is closer to the 5, so we add that to our answer list. At this point, our answer list has reached k numbers, so we are done. Let's go back over to the code. This is the second part of the solution. First, some initialization we have our left and right comparison boundaries. 
and these are going to be where the high and low finished in the binary search. We assign the left to high because when this binary search finishes, the high pointer is to the left of low. Next, we have our result list. This is a deck, so we can append to both ends in constant time. While the length of our result is still less than k, it means we need to add more numbers. In the while loop, the main part of the algorithm is in the else statement. I'll come back to the if and elif in a second, but in the else statement, we compare the distance of the left and right pointers. If the left distance is closer, we append the left number and move the left boundary to the left. If the right distance is closer, we append the right number and move the right boundary to the right. Going back to the if and elif statements, these are just boundary checks. If the left is negative one, it means we have moved the left boundary out of bounds, so we can only add right boundary numbers. Vice versa for the elif statement, elif the right is equal to the length, it means the right boundary is out of bounds, and we have to add left boundary numbers. Finally, when the size of our result is k, we exit the while loop and return the result converted from a deck to a list. Okay, that is it for the algorithm part. Hopefully you understand. Let's go over the time and space complexity now. Again, we are going to let n be the amount of nums. For time, we have o of log n for the binary search part of the solution, plus k for the while loop part of the solution, where we expand the boundaries to find the candidate. Like I said earlier, because there's no guarantee on how small k is relative to n, if k is large and close to n, then this algorithm doesn't have any asymptotic time complexity improvement over the first solution. However, if the interviewer tells you that k is often significantly less than n, then this algorithm would perform better in practice. It is worth it to point out these caveats when discussing solutions and analyzing time complexities in a real interview. For space, it is O of k for the deck, but we return that as our answer, so I'm not really sure that counts as extra space. Okay, that is it for the solution. Hope this video helps. Thank you for watching, and good luck on all your interviews.